Great, here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending our live 2020 CSUSB Graduate Program Expo. My name is John Paul Hernandez, your Employer Relations Specialist here at the Career Center, along with Jackie Aguayo, our event coordinator for the Career Center. Hey, Jackie. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we will be your hosts for today's virtual event. This webinar will be recorded and shared via email and uploaded to the Career Center's YouTube channel at its conclusion. Before we get started, I'd like to go over some of the functions available to you all during the presentation. Your microphone will be muted throughout the presentation and in the bottom center of the screen, you will see a Q&A chat option. Feel free to go ahead and type in any questions that you may have during the presentation. Following the presentation, we'll go ahead and go over those questions live. Now, we will turn it over to our presenters from the college. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you everyone. And I wanna welcome you for the uh, College of Natural Sciences uh, portion uh, of this presentation of some of our graduate programs. Uh, my name is Roberto Hernandez and I am the Director of Administrative Operations uh, and Marketing in the College of Natural Sciences Office of the Dean. Uh, I know we're on a very unforgiving schedule and time frame, so I, I am going to jump uh, very quickly uh, into my presentation. But there are a couple things that I wanted to make clear. Uh, uh, you know, we've got an hour together, so I'm very, uh, very blessed of that. Uh, 30 minutes, I'll go over a number of slides. Uh, I just want to uh, make sure that uh, what I'm doing here, this presentation is very uh, going to give a really broad and general overview for what our graduate programs uh, are all about. Uh, unfortunately, they are not as exhaustive and comprehensive as we would like to give everyone that really detailed sense of them, but I think you will definitely walk away getting a, a good flavor for what our programs are all about and what they can offer you. Uh, specifically, I do want to mention there may be some uh, sharing of admission and graduation requirements. There's a number of those. I'm only going to mention a few of them, and there are going to be other opportunities to go over them in detail, either when you contact one of our program uh, coordinators, uh, or email them or something along those nature, along that nature. Uh, with that in mind, if any of you have a QR code scanner or reader on your, on your phone or on a tablet or other device, I might make the kind suggestion to have that ready. Uh, I have a few slides that will show a QR code that will open up your browser and open up the, uh, the university uh, catalog page for that, for each of the programs that we will be discussing so that you can really see that really fine grained detail of that and kind of look at that on your own time. So if you have a QR code reader on your phone, get it ready. Uh, I will be showing uh, quite a number of those uh, at the end of each, each degree program that I share. Uh, and in addition, I will be sharing a few names and emails of our program graduate, our graduate program, excuse me, coordinators. So don't be shy if you want to take a screenshot or take a photo of your screen with your phone so you can kind of capture that information uh, as well. Uh, another thing that I'll mention is that at about the 1230 mark, uh, which is less than half an hour, uh, I am currently joined or will be joined by members of our faculty who serve as the coordinators for our graduate programs or program directors. And they will be on hand if you have really specific particular questions about the programs. Uh, and I will have ask them for help on some, uh, some questions that you may be able to have, you know, whether you want to ask your questions in the chat uh, or anything like that. Uh, that'd be great. Uh, so without, uh, uh, so keep that in mind as well. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen in just two seconds. And I'm definitely not going to try to, but if for some reason we see something that isn't kosher, that we need to clarify or correct, feel free to, to, to jump in and chime in on that one. I mean, I definitely want to make sure that this is accurate, given that it is just a broad and general overview. So Again, welcome to uh, the College of Natural Sciences overview of our graduate programs. And uh, one thing I do wanna point out, the college, some of this is, is maybe known, but some of it maybe not. Uh, our college is composed of nine different units, departments, uh, but only six of them are currently offering uh, graduate programs. They are all master's level, and that is our uh, departments of biology, our School of Computer Science and Engineering, as well as our departments of geological sciences, Health Science and Human Ecology, Mathematics and Nursing. 
So we'll jump into our first one. I am going in alpha or alphabetical order from our department. So we're going to take a quick stop off at our Department of Biology, which offers an MS in Biology. Uh, now this is something if you're a student uh, who's looking for this is that this program is made to provide students with uh, these and more. Uh, if you're looking to improve your competence in the field, uh, work on your uh, your ability to self direct. Uh, get yourself prepared to take on a leadership position in the field of biology. This is the kind of degree that's likely going to get your attention. Uh, the other thing that I want to uh, make sure I don't miss is that this is a degree that really can provide a competitive advantage for you. For example, if you're interested, you're planning on pursuing a doctoral degree, uh, or perhaps there's a health professions program. There are many of them, but I just cited one example uh, as a medical doctor. This is an excellent uh, uh, building block for that one. Uh, another avenue that, that this degree could serve you is if you're looking to pursue employment in many, many, many sectors, and I emphasize the many. Uh, obviously, becoming a, a biology professor is one of them, but also working in government and the public sector. And I do mention just a few fields. There are many, many more, uh, you know, in addition to teaching and public policy. Uh, in fact, I'd recently had been in contact with one of our biology alums uh, who had gone on to work at a congressional caucus. And he's in medical school at, uh, I think, UC Davis, but he's also pursuing uh, a pathway that has to do with health uh, public po and public policy. So definitely very gratifying to see the, what he's been able to, to take away from uh, the Department of Biology. Uh, I will make, a, 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 again, a reminder that uh, I will be briefly alluding to some admission requirements and some grad requirements, but these are absolutely not exhaustive. These are just some of the highlights. Probably the most important thing I want to mention about the admission requirements for the MS in Biology is uh, having made contact with the faculty member who will uh, allow you into their, uh, accept you into their lab and also uh, make the commitment to serve as your thesis advisor. Uh, quite a number of our, our, our admission requirements will involve having a bachelor's in, in that same field or a similar one, so this is no exception. Uh, you're going to want to have a, B, a bachelor's in biology or something related, and this is something that you're going to see a lot, so make a note of it. A lot of our programs will require some sort of a personal statement. Uh, many times they may, may ask you to articulate uh, why you're interested in this particular program and or what your goals may be. And then a letter of introduction, three letters, excuse me, are also uh, among some of the factors that we're going to look at. Uh, one of the things that you're going to uh, keep in mind to, to graduate uh, from this program is having had conducted your own independent research as well as a thesis as well. Uh, this is, uh, speaking of QR codes as I mentioned earlier, if anyone wants to use them or make a note of this or screenshot it, uh, I think Dr. Newcomb is with us here. There she is waving, I see you. Uh, but I took the liberties of putting, listing her name, uh, some of her roles and her email. So if you want to make a note of that, she will also join us at the 1230 mark uh, uh, to ask any questions for those that have uh, uh, inquiries regarding this program. On the right hand side, you will see a QR code. Uh, if you do scan that, it should kick open your browser and take you to the catalog page that gives you a lot of that really fine tooth detail re regarding the MS in Biology program. All right, I'm going to move on to our School of Computer Science and Engineering, which I'm very, very happy uh, to uh, offers an MS in Computer Science and Engineering. Uh, this is a very, uh, obviously, a technically oriented uh, sort of program. Uh, for those who want to acquire or extend their knowledge in the field of computer science. Uh, you're going to see it's a combination of the study of not only computer devices and their applications, but you're also going to look at some of the philosophical foundations uh, that underlie this particular discipline. Um, this program offers several opportunities. Uh, as that listed here on the slide, you're going to be able to build up that knowledge uh, in computer science and strengthen your professional marketability. That's a fancy way of saying people are going to want to hire you more than others. Uh, if you perhaps have a different uh, background or not, and you're looking for a career change in computer science, uh, this is a great way to do, this degree is a great way to get you equipped for that. Uh, but I do want to make a note that if you do, do come from a background that is not, that is not uh, if you don't have a computer science or computer engineering degree, there may be some classes that you're gonna wanna need to take first. 
uh, before you're admitted into the MS program. Uh, that's about, these situations are evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. They're gonna look at your transcript. They may look at input from you. So keep that in mind as well. And then in addition, much like many of our MS programs, if you're thinking about further graduate work down the line, you wanna get that PhD or another doctoral program, this is gonna really serve you well uh, with the foundation for that. So definitely recommend it if that's one of the, uh, that's kind of on your list of what you're gonna to want to uh, shoot for. Uh, just a sample of some of the things that you're gonna get out of this course, uh, you know, building up those, those skills in computer science that have to do with, with problem solving, practical skills, and that's gonna be really mediated through uh, uh, software development, uh, research that is gonna be supervised by our faculty, uh, as well as your own independent studies, and of course, the coursework itself. Um, and then other, uh, other uh, benefits from the program is really strengthening those, those communication skills, uh, whether verbal or written, critical thinking, which are obviously very, very important. A lot of these uh, uh, very powerful skills that will serve you well in, in many, many fields, not just in the field of computer science. Again, these are just a few highlights. You're gonna, there's obviously a lot of GPA degree requirements, uh, and I don't wanna gloss over them, but just, uh, just be aware that uh, this one, like many will, they're gonna wanna look at individuals that have a bachelor's in computer science or related uh, with 3.0 GPA. Uh, a statement of purpose is another factor that will be, need to be submitted, that will be looked at, excuse me, to be considered for admission. And uh, yes, the, all of our programs will have a minimum number of semester units that, uh, that must be completed. But I, for this particular one, for graduation requirements, I want to point out that uh, you, there, you will have to do a thesis, uh, a project, or a comprehensive exam, uh, and that you have a seven-year time span uh, to complete uh, this uh, MS program. For the MS program, if you want to learn more, I heartily recommend, please make note of uh, this email and this individual, Dr. Ernesto Gomez, who is the coordinator for this program and on our faculty. And if you scan the QR code on the right-hand side, it will kick open your browser uh, to get much more information from, uh, from our catalog page on this particular degree program. I'm gonna move over to our Department of Geological Sciences, where we have two uh, MS degrees that I'd like to share uh, with you. The first one is our MS in geology, um, which is obviously gonna be focused very heavily on geological study and research. And if you're a student who is planning to pursue graduate level work and go on to doctoral studies, this is the kind of program that you may wanna look at and consider. Uh, if you're preparing for a degree in geological fields, uh, and again, you wanna have that, that competitive advantage out there, this is also another degree uh, that can serve you very, very well. Uh, the list of career opportunities that are available uh, for graduates of this degree can, can, can go on and on and on, but I do list a few of them right here, uh, mining, uh, engineering, geology. And then I, was, I, do, I did become aware uh, that a number of some of our potential employers, uh, Hilltop Geotechnical, Mitsubishi Mining. Uh, and another thing that I don't want to be remiss is, if you have enjoyed uh, living, working, and studying in the Riverside and San Bernardino County region, AKA the Inland Empire, a lot of employers uh, for uh, those who have studied uh, geological sciences, they are local. Employers are local, jobs are local. So that's something that you may wanna keep in mind uh, if that's something that's important to you. I know it's definitely important for me uh, who was uh, born and raised in Southern California and have been living in the Inland Empire since I was 11 years old. I'll move on over to just a sampling of some of the admission requirements, which, you know, not surprisingly, will involve a, a bachelor's degree uh, in geology or an associated field. Uh, we're also going to look at, want to look at uh, individuals that had a year of lab courses in general chem and physics. Uh, uh, letters of recommendation are also a very important, as well as uh, a one-page statement. Uh, again, there's uh, 30 semester units that are minimum, uh, but the, probably the main thing to focus on for your graduation requirement is the element that has to do with completing and defending uh, your thesis, which is definitely the, a major uh, feather in your cap along this learning journey. Uh, there are many, many resources that are available 
uh, for students in this program. If geochemistry is your jam, you're going to find uh, all types of instrumentation and equipment um, that'll be a, a tremendous use for you, whether we're talking about scanning electron microscopes. Uh, we also have, we've been fortunate to secure quite a bit in digital mapping technology and LIDAR, which is, I won't do it justice, but I'll say LIDAR is like radar, but using light and it's able to kind of uh, uh, be able to image and look at features that you wouldn't have otherwise be able to see and obscured by the landscape and so forth and so on. And some of this gear is operated by hand, some of it is operated by drone, uh, using, uh, by mounting them on drones. And I also want to mention that uh, uh, obviously with any and all safe and safety and health measures in place for any uh, field work, we're also equipped with four wheel drives and field equipment to make all that type of work uh, possible, whether we're talking about going out to mining lands uh, and other uh, out, outdoor, outdoor, excuse me, areas out in the field. Another program that I want to mention is our MS in Environmental Studies. It's uh, multi, multidisciplinary. And this is something that if you'd like to uh, get a broad back background in many sciences uh, that are relevant uh, to the environment, uh, if you'd like to be able to equip yourself with more knowledge about geology, economics, uh, management, this is, and also if you want to pursue graduate level work, this is a degree program that will serve you very, very well. Uh, these aren't the only uh, types of career outcomes that you can get from uh, when you complete this work, but among the ones you can get is working for water quality and air quality agencies, which is very relevant in, in not only in California, but in many, many states. Uh, also, U.S. Forest Service and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service are other uh, 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 employers uh, that can be pursued when you're equipped with this type of degree. Some of the admission requirements, again, a bachelor's degree in geology and associated field. Uh, a year of lab courses is also something we want to we want to see. In addition to general chem and physics, uh, I want to mention that organic chemistry is another course uh, that is important uh, to be considered for admission. And again, some letters of recommendation and a, a one-page statement. Uh, from the graduation requirements, I will point out that there is an internship uh, that is part of part of the requirement, plus an extended project uh, and its defense or a research thesis and defense of said thesis. And the resources that I show here on this slide for the MS in Environmental uh, Sciences is really identical to the one that I showed for MS in Geology, but I did want to point out that uh, the instrumentation from uh, our, for our Department of Chemistry, uh, spectrometers, etc., that's, that's, that's another resource that's going to be available and going to be very relevant uh, for this particular program. And last but not least, uh, if you did want to get a little bit more information or contact someone that has that information uh, later on, and she should be joining us uh, at 1230 mark, uh, uh, Dr. Joan Frixell is the coordinator for this particular program, part of our geological sciences faculty, and you'll see her email there. Uh, if you'd like to get more information about our MS in geology, please scan the QR code on the top right. If you're interested more in the MS program in environmental sciences, please scan the QR code on the bottom right, and they will take you and provide a lot of detail for you. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to our Department of Health Science and Human Ecology. Uh, there are two programs. I do have our, our coordinators here with us, uh, but the first one that I'll start with is our Master of Public Health. Uh, program. Uh, this was this program was really developed for public health professionals who are seeking to advance to management levels in the design, implementation, and administration of public health agencies. And it's also to train individuals who can provide service and leadership in the community, in community and public health. Uh, so you're someone that if you're a professional that wants to expand your skills and knowledge in public health, this is a program for you to consider. Uh, if you're a student right now, and you want to uh, help us out build this career in public health, this is another program that you're going to want to take a look at. Regardless of your intentions, your foundation is going to be composed of these areas here. Uh, I won't read them all, but I'll point out some of them. Epidemiology, which is also very, which is obviously very top of mind right now. Uh, health systems, organization delivery, public health statistics. These are all things that are relevant now, then, and in the future. 
And these are going to be, uh, again, part of your core areas of studies. Some of the admission requirements, in addition to uh, GPA and, and 60 units in undergraduate co coursework, uh, they're gonna want to, we're going to want to see undergraduate coursework in the natural and social sciences. Uh, again, letters of recommendation, one of them will need to come from a professor. And uh, we'd like to see a writing sample on a topic of interest that has to do with health services management. But it must be a sample that will have uh, academic citations as well. So definitely be aware of that. And among some of the graduation requirements, uh, uh, obviously will include a minimum GPA uh, in the graduate coursework with a grade of B, greater B or better, and 42 semester units uh, minimum. I do want to point out that this program is accredited by the Council on Education for Public Health. That's very important when you look at when you want to consider the credibility and the standing of the programs that we offer, and obviously in, in this one, in, in this particular example. I went ahead and post the contact information for our graduate coordinator. Uh, so again, if you of the mind, please take a screenshot, take a note of this. And you also note that on the right hand side, I've included another QR code uh, that will take you to information uh, in particular to this uh, Master in Public Health program. Another program from our Department of Health Science and Human Ecology is our MS in Health Services Administration. Uh, if you are a student that would like to become a health service administrator or manager in these and any other settings, hospitals, uh, uh, federal health agencies, military health, the list can go on and on. Uh, this, is, this is likely a degree program that you're gonna wanna let, take a look at to equip you with the skills, the knowledge, to be able to succeed and make that positive impact in this realm of public, uh, in, this, in this realm of health services and in these professional settings. Again, not an exhaustive, these are just some examples. They also happen to be a lot of our, our, our most common examples that we find our alums end up at. Uh, some of our mission requirements, uh, uh, let's look, we wanna look at a resume or a CV. Uh, a two to three page statement of purpose. You know, in that statement of purpose, articulate what is it about this particular program that interests you? What are your goals? What do you intend to do? What is it that interests you? We'd like to see that. And then uh, a writing sample on a health services management topic is another thing that uh, is part of the admission process to be considered. For our graduation requirements, I'll point out that, that we ask that this, to, uh, we require that this to be completed uh, in seven years. So definitely keep that in mind for your planning. And on this slide, I'm going to go and put up our name and email uh, for our graduate, or excuse me, our director of our uh, master's in um, MS and health services uh, administration uh, program. And if you use the QR code on the right hand side, that will open up a bulletin page for this particular program. Again, it will give you a lot of that really fine grained a detail that you can uh, review at your leisure. Sorry, maybe I went too fast. I'll leave it on for just a few more moments. I'll move on to our Department of Mathematics, where we offer an MA in mathematics. And you know, questions with all of our programs get asked from our students and from applicant is, well, how what is, how is this program? How can it serve you? Uh, if you want to teach at the community college level, this is, you know, I'll, I'll make the grandiose statement, this is a degree for you. Uh, if you're thinking about a PhD in mathematics or a related field, if that's part of your game plan, this is definitely another, uh, this is a another reason why you should consider this degree. Or if you'd like to move into a career in industry where uh, math a, math a strong mathematical uh, background uh, is going to give you a competitive advantage, this is another reason why this degree program uh, will serve you well. Just some of the admission requirements. Again, you're going to see that we have three letters of recommendation. We would like to be able to see a letter that spells out a little bit about your background. What is it about this program that is of interest to you? And, and what your goals are? What are you going to do with it? Those are going to be very important things to consider.
And uh, again, there's, there's a, a certain number of units and a certain GPA, uh, but definitely keep in mind that uh, either uh, as far as uh, uh, completing the program, you will either have to have a thesis to complete a thesis, or you also have the option of passing, if you don't wanna do that, you have the option of passing three comprehensive exams. So you do have two options there. And then in terms of kind of, it's kind of a resource and support. There are graduate teaching assistant programs that are available. Those are really quite a big deal. If you're looking to get a little bit of financial support uh, that these positions will provide, and also to get that kind of hands-on teaching experience, this is an excellent way uh, to do so. Definitely the, 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 the advantage of any graduate teaching assistant, that experience, uh, and it's a job. Our graduate program coordinator's email and name is listed on this slide. And if you see the QR code on the right-hand side, that'll kick open some information uh, for the MAA Mathematics program. So definitely want to make that available to you. And last but not certainly least, I will move over to our department of nur our esteemed department of nursing, uh, where we offer a master of science uh, in nursing. As you can see from the slide, it is a hybrid. Hybrid means that it's being delivered to you in a couple of different ways, virtual and in person. Uh, it is typically completed in two two and a half years, so you know put that into your equation and, and your for your planning purposes. Uh, you will see that most of the coursework you're going to be able to get online, which makes this uh, offers quite a number of advantages. But there are a couple of in-person uh, meetings that are part of this, uh, uh, two in-persons uh, per term. And synchronous means that they take place at a particular time uh, and date. So you have to be able to make those, of course. And there are also a third meeting that you can do uh, via Zoom as well. Uh, given current circumstances, obviously this may be something that many of us have become very, very familiar with, being able to uh, 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 get information uh, and get our, 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 get it all delivered in a, in a virtual format. Uh, but in addition to that, I wanna uh, make it clear that their students in this program will be asked to choose one of three concentrations. One is the advanced community uh, slash public health nursing. Uh, this is in a concentration that will prepare the graduate to deliver expert nursing care to community-based populations in positions in public health departments, home health agencies, and other community-based organizations. <coughs> Pardon me. Another concentration are population health and clinical nurse leaders. This is a concentration that prepares a graduate to apply a population-focused perspective in leading delivery of expert nursing care in a wide range of clinical settings. So we're talking about hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, ambulatory settings, and more. Our third concentration, which is nurse educator, this is a concentration that will prepare you for nurse educator positions in academic settings, clinical settings, uh, and a clinical focus on a selected patient population is definitely included. Regardless of the concentration that you teach, excuse me, that you choose, uh, all students will have to take core courses that include just some of these advanced nursing roles, uh, health policy leadership, advanced theory and research. So everyone, this is the core. And in addition to that, another important piece of the, this uh, program is these clinical practicum hours uh, with agencies and facilities with which the university has an established formal relationship with. And unless I'm wrong here, and I'll, Dr. Brandt may correct me with, it is my understanding that when we, when we work out the clinical practicum hours with our students, there's always an effort to make sure that these are in facilities that can, that can work well with our students, where they live, where they're coming from, and so forth. That is correct. We can't guarantee the um, uh, practicum will take place in a facility in the uh, graduate student's hometown, but we certainly do get uh, as close as we can. And obviously there has to be a good fit uh, for the student's practicum and their, uh, in the facility with their selected focus. Thank you very much, Dr. Brand. I appreciate that. And then again, this is just some admission requirements, just a few. Uh, having a baccalaureate, uh, baccalaureate degree in nursing from an accredited program, 
uh, having a current uh, California registered nurse license, uh, no disciplinary action, unrestricted, et cetera. Uh, again, three letters of professional recommendation. The, these letters should be coming from nursing supervisors, nursing professors. Uh, a personal statement. Why? What is it about this degree program that it, that interests you? We want we want to hear that. Hear you articulate that. And then, uh, in addition, uh, uh, this is one that would scare me because this was a very hard course that I took in my in a uh, in my MBA is statistics. But we are all want to see a successful completion of an undergraduate statistics course. Very important piece. There are other requirements. These are just a few that I wanted to point out. Uh, two things that I'm very proud to brag is that this is a program that's accredited by the Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education. When you look at accreditation of your program, that always speaks very highly to the standing, the quality of the program. And the other thing I'll mention is it's the only public university in Lent, Inland Empire to offer a master's degree in nursing. So when we say we're very unique in this degree uh, offering, we mean it. That is a fact. And uh, you just heard from Dr. Cheryl Brandt, the coordinator for this program. I went ahead and shared her email there. And on the right-hand side is a QR code uh, that will take you to more information uh, that's related to the, uh, this nursing degree. And with that, I'm just a minute late. I'll go ahead and wrap up this uh, very swift presentation. I appreciate your patience and consideration. A lot I always wanted to get in here. But I'd like to open up this Q&A session to any of our student attendees that are here. Uh, obviously, John Paul or any of my colleagues, let me know if there's anything I should or shouldn't do. But what I would like to do is that I, if we have any students that are here that have any questions related to our MS in biology, uh, I do have Dr. Laura Newcomb who has joined us, among our other esteemed graduate program coordinators or directors. Uh, I definitely would like to open up. Let's start with, uh, uh, with that, if, uh, if anyone minds. So let me stop my share. There we go. Let me come back. Great. Thank you so much, Roberto. Great presentation. Uh, we are definitely starting the Q&A portion of the webinar now. Uh, so feel free to, to, to type in in the chat there, the Q&A chat, any questions that you may have. Um, I did see a couple of questions about uh, the webinar being recorded. Some people missed the beginning. Uh, yes, there will be a recording link sent out. Uh, our goal is for, to do it Friday. It may take another week if we do need to do any editing, but uh, you will be getting a recording if you've registered for the event. Um, we do see a question here for MPH program. Oh, it looks like it got deleted. So someone may have, uh, type the answer <laughs> and take it away from me before I can read it. Um, well, if I may, I, I don't want to uh, hijack. Uh, uh, keep to it strictly. So we are open to uh, considering applications. And really the most important thing is that you um, contact um, faculty that you're interested in their research and that you're interested in working with them. And our department has that they're interested in. I'm seeing a nodded, a, a nodded, a nod yes from Dr. New, uh, Dr. Newcomb. So I'll take that that as as an affirmative. And uh, this is John Frixell, and I'll jump in here. And I think it's always possible to contact the coordinators. Uh, it's never too early. I love that answer. We yep. say the same thing in the Career Center. It's never too early to get started. Um, I know there's some questions being populated in the Q and A. If we can not dismiss them until maybe we read them aloud. Um, we got someone in there that's really fast. That's great. So I think actually we see one of the answers in the chat here. MPH admits fall only. Applications uh, will open October 1st this year. So uh, good information there. Okay. Feel free to type any questions anyone answered or, or I didn't see it, but someone was asking if, if uh, uh, you know, this is something I, I'll, any of our grad program co coordinators may want to answer. I have a feeling the answer is it's a case by case basis, but I know some of the requirements sometimes say you need a, a, a bachelor's. What you're doing and if your background is appropriate. So you could be considered. I would definitely, again, just talk to potential mentors. Great, thank you so much. We had another question here about, um, and it was actually answered, what staff would you recommend talking to about environmental studies 
specifically for sustainability. And uh, Joan was able to, to answer back there to, to contact direct. Uh, let me copy and paste the email address here. I'll put that in the chat. And um, any other uh, panelists here, if you'd like, or great. So keep those questions coming. Um, we do have a couple more minutes to go. Uh, I'll heartily endorse that, John Paul. I, you know, I feel I didn't do enough justice to many of our excellent programs as well. So. Uh, any opportunity for many of our program coordinators? Anything I missed, or uh, uh, there was a nuance or detail that was relevant that I maybe glossed over? I, I welcome it. You, my colleagues, are, my, are the experts. I can say something about math. My name is Corey Dunn. I'm the graduate coordinator in mathematics. You could talk to me as well and, and let us know more information about what your actual interests are. Thank you so much. And for Jessica, just uh, Dr. Frixell's and Dr. Newcomb's emails are in the chat. And uh, John Paul, if you don't mind, uh, I know we're sharing a lot of the individual emails from our grad program coordinators and directors. I had it in the slide. I'm gonna add our, the, our College of Natural Sciences general email in the chat, which is just CNS. So if any of our attendees says, hey, uh, Roberto, can you send me a copy of the slides that you showed? Because it, it, has, it uh, has a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of names and emails that I didn't catch or maybe I didn't grab from the from the chat feature. I'd be more than happy to email you a PDF of that as well. So anyone that wanted a copy of that, uh, email uh, CNS and I'll put it in the chat right now. That's great. And then um, you can also send that to, to me or Jackie. Okay. Um, we'll make sure to include that in the uh, email we send out with the recording. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, John. I'll, I'll make sure I get that to you when we're done. Awesome. Okay, this is from MS, um, MS Health Service Administration. Um, I just want to mention that the program accepts application uh, twice a year, fall and spring. Um, the spring are, are deadline to apply for admission is October 30. And then for the fall admission, the deadline to apply will be May 15 of each year and also the program technically is uh two years but you shouldn't take more than seven years to complete the program thank you thank you dr Paula. great any uh final comments there from the team oh it looks like we just had a question pop up oh great See here, I've heard that there's a possibility for the addition of a MS in nutrition program in the next few years. Is this true? If they want to, uh, we'll write it to the right one. If they want to, uh, <clears throat> probably the easiest way is to email CNS at csusb.eu and depending on uh, which of the, which program, I mean, they can obviously contact the individual uh, program, co uh, program coordinator. Uh, but a quick answer is also if they email CNS at csusb.edu and depending on which program that they're interested in, we can get that information, get them connected with it as well. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you all for uh, the great questions. Again, thank you to our presenters and our panelists here from the College of Natural Sciences for the wonderful presentation. Really appreciate it. Uh, for all of our participants out there, Please complete our short webinar survey uh, by scanning the QR code on your screen. Uh, not only is your feedback greatly appreciated, you will also be entered into an opportunity 